Now that we have an understanding of how resistors can be used in a circuit, let's talk about ways to combine them. Most basic components with two terminals, like resistors, can be combined in one of two ways. The first is series, where they are attached end to end, like this. And then the second is parallel, where the top two leads and bottom two leads are connected, like so. Before we analyze circuits with series and parallel connections, let's talk about this idea of a node. A node is the point in a circuit where two or more circuit elements meet. When drawing schematics, we assume that these lines are ideal wires that have zero resistance. These little dots show where wires connect at an intersection. In the real world, though, wires do actually have some resistance. But the resistance is often considered insignificant when compared with other components, so we assume it's zero. With that in mind, we can conclude that there is no voltage drop when comparing one point in the node with any other. So we can safely assume that the voltage is the same at any point in the node when compared to a common reference like our return node here. Now that our circuits are getting a little bit more complicated, I felt compelled to construct a new water demo. I give you Liquid Circuitry 2.0. Right now, I've got it configured in series. Components that are connected in series share a common node and have the same current flowing through them. You'll notice that water pressure drops as it passes through each resistor in series. If we add up the pressure drops across the components, it equals the pressure difference between the standing water in the reservoir and the output of the pump. This is important to remember as voltage in a circuit behaves in a similar fashion. Often, you'll want to figure out what the equivalent resistance of a circuit is, such that we were able to combine these two resistors into one resistor, and the pressure from the supply causes the same amount of current to flow through that one resistor and then back again, what would the value of that resistor be? We'll figure out how to calculate this and then demonstrate it with an example. I've drawn a basic circuit with two resistors in series connected to a voltage source. The current flowing out of the voltage source is IS, the resistors' value can be anything, so we'll label these as R1 and R2. The current flowing through resistor 1 is I1, and the current flowing through resistor 2 is I2. We'll say that the voltage source has an arbitrary voltage of Vs, and the voltage drops across resistors 1 and 2 are V1 and V2, respectively. Because this is a closed circuit, the current flowing out of the supply must be the same as the current flowing into it, which is the same as the current flowing through resistor 1 and resistor 2. Remember that I mentioned that the pressure drops across the resistors in the water demo needed to add up to the drop across the pump. The same holds true here. The voltage drops across resistor 1 and resistor 2 must add up to the difference in potential across the voltage source. Using Ohm's law, we can substitute current times resistance for each of the voltages. Knowing that the current through each of the components must be the same, we can then safely substitute IS for I1 and I2. Now, we can divide both sides of the equation by IS. What we're left with is that the equivalent resistance is equal to the value of resistor 1 plus the value of resistor 2. This holds true regardless of how many resistors have in series. The equivalent resistance is equal to the sum of all the resistances. We can try this with an example. I've connected these two 100 ohm resistors in series. Because they're in series, we can sum the resistances together to get the equivalent resistance. If we add 100 plus 100, we get a total of 200 ohms. When I measure the resistance across both with a multimeter, you can see that it's about 200 ohms. Now, let's talk about parallel circuits. By adjusting some of these valves, the water now splits at this T intersection. It has the option of flowing through this resistor or it can flow down here through this resistor before recombining again over here. In parallel circuits, components share two common nodes. For example, we've got this node up here and we've got this node down here. That means that if we add the current flowing through resistor 1 with the current flowing through resistor 3, it must add up to the current flowing out of the supply. Once again, we can use this information to figure out what the equivalent resistance is for parallel resistors. In this circuit, we've got two resistors connected in parallel. Here, the voltage across resistor 1 is the same as the voltage across resistor 2, which is the same as the voltage from the power supply. This is because the top connections all share one node, which has the same voltage across the whole node. The bottom section is also one node. As in the water demo, the current flowing out of the source must be equal to the sum of the current flowing through resistor 1 plus the current flowing through resistor 2. 
We can rearrange Ohm's law to show that the current is equal to voltage over resistance. Now, we can substitute this into the current equation. The voltage at the source divided by the equivalent resistance is equal to the voltage drop across the first resistor divided by its resistance plus the voltage drop across the second resistor divided by its resistance. Because the voltage of the source is equal to the voltage across each of the resistors, we can substitute Vs for V1 and V2. We can then multiply both sides of the equation by Vs, and we see that the reciprocal of the equivalent resistance is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. By multiplying both sides of the equation by REQ, and then dividing it by 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, we see that the equivalent resistance of the parallel circuit is equal to 1 divided by 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. As with series resistors, this equation can be expanded to include as many resistors in parallel as you want. The equivalent resistance is equal to the reciprocal of 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 and so on. Let's connect two 100 ohm resistors in parallel. Using our equation from earlier, we can find the equivalent resistance by dividing 1 by 1 over 100 ohms plus 1 over 100 ohms. And we get a total of 50 ohms. To verify that, we'll measure the resistance across both resistors, and you can see that we get about 50 ohms. Interestingly, as you put resistors in parallel, the equivalent resistance is less than the individual resistor values. Here, I've got one light bulb connected to 6.3 volts by itself. And then over here, I've got two light bulbs connected in series with 6.3 volts across them. You'll notice that with the same voltage, there is less current as the equivalent resistance is now higher, and as a result, the bulbs are dimmer. Christmas lights, for example, are wired in series so that the many little voltage drops add up to your wall's voltage level, something like 120 volts in the United States. And finally, over here, we've got two light bulbs connected in parallel with 6.3 volts across them. As we learned earlier, the equivalent resistance of this circuit is decreased over the single light bulb, which means more current is flowing out of the supply. As you can see, each of the light bulbs is as bright as the first, but it takes twice as much current to make this happen. Your home, for example, has many circuits wired in parallel so that if you lose something like a light bulb, it burns out, it won't bring the others down with it. Now that you know the basics of how these components are connected, see if you can identify examples of series and parallel circuits in the real world.